Imagine a family so powerful that their wealth could reshape nations, their influence spanning centuries, and their control extending far beyond borders. Today, we dive into the extraordinary world of the Windsor family, an enigmatic lineage that holds the key to Europe's true power dynamics. From conquerors to kings, this family has it all, the riches, the connections, and the sheer influence to make even the mightiest tremble. Welcome to our channel, where we uncover the secrets of the Windsor family, their unimaginable wealth, and the gripping hold they have on Europe. The power and influence the Windsor family has over Europe is wild, but to understand where this power comes from, we'd have to run through a quick history of this family's origin. The name Windsor has been attached to the castle at Berkshire for many, many centuries, but this name has been adopted by the British royal family for over 100 years now. Although this sounds like an English name befitting the British royals, this was not their original name. Their family name used to be Saxe, Coburg and Gotha. You might be wondering, this is an unusual name for a British family. You're right, it is unusual, but that's because the royal family has a German origin, hence their German family name. What's also interesting is that it is not just the Windsor family that comes from the Saxe, Coburg and Gotha family. A few other royal families across Europe share this same German ancestry. However, the British royal family deserted all ties to their German origin in 1917 during World War I, considering it wasn't a great time in history to be affiliated with the Germans. They were the cause of the war. They launched attacks in many cities across Europe, including London, and that was just one of the many atrocities committed by the Germans. For fear that the British monarchy would be abolished because of their German origin, King George V announced that the royal family would change its name from Saxe Coburg and Gotha to Windsor, a name that has always been a part of Great Britain. Just like he hoped, the name change gained popularity among the British people, thus ensuring the sustenance of the royal family. 105 years and five monarchs later, the Windsor family is still going strong, but even though they abandoned their original name, a huge portion of the family's wealth, influence and power comes from their German ancestors. The family tree of the Saxe Coburg and Gotha family is a very extensive one, but if we're to talk about how the Windsor family branches out, the most important landmark on this family tree would be Queen Victoria. She was one of the most significant monarchs in European history and has been called the Grandmother of Europe countless times. Queen Victoria had nine children who were strategically married all over Europe, and as a result of these marriages, her descendants sit on the thrones of Belgium, Denmark, Luxembourg, Norway, Spain, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. Although most members of these royal families have abandoned the family name, the Saxe Coburg and Gotha family has power over a good portion of Europe, and the Windsor family plays a huge part in maintaining this power. However, powerful relatives aren't the only souvenirs the Windsor family has from its parent family. The Windsors also inherited a great deal of wealth from Queen Victoria. This family has a collective net worth of almost $30 billion, and a huge part of this fortune comes from their real estate portfolio. Some of these properties were owned by and inherited from Queen Victoria, like Buckingham Palace, worth about $4.5 billion, the Balmoral Castle, worth about $140 million, and a few others. Other items passed down to the Windsors from Queen Victoria include priceless jewelry, artifacts, and a vast collection of expensive materials, which we'll discuss shortly. The Windsor family is one of the richest royal families in the world. This fact is usually followed by the questions, how come they're so rich when they have no jobs, and where do they get all their money from? Well, there are a couple of answers to those questions. Old money, sovereign grants, the Privy Purse and Duchy of Lancaster, and finally, the Duchy of Cornwall. We will now expatiate on each of these sources and how much they generate for the Windsor family annually. The Windsors come from a long line of conquerors, monarchs, and most importantly, royalty. This means they're extremely wealthy, and most of this wealth is old money. One way in which this wealth was passed down was through jewels. The Windsor family has a collection of jewels called the Crown Jewels. This collection consists of over 100 objects and at least 23,000 gemstones, including the Kohinoor Diamond, one of the most valuable jewels in the world. This jewel collection is worth at least $5 billion and is owned by the reigning monarch, that is King Charles III. Apart from the Crown Jewels, which are locked up in the Tower of London, the Windsors have family heirlooms passed down for generations. This includes tiaras, necklaces, rings, brooches, watches, earrings, bracelets, and other royal accessories. 
Before she died, Queen Elizabeth had over 300 pieces of jewelry worth billions of dollars, many of which were passed down from Queen Mary. Now we get to see some of these pieces on Queen Camilla, Kate, Princess of Wales, and other female members of the royal family. But best believe, there is so much more where those came from. Another source of money for the Windsor family is the Sovereign Grant, which is exactly what it sounds like. This is money paid to the royal family by the government to fund their official duties and for the maintenance of the palaces owned by the Crown. These include properties like Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle, Kensington Palace, and other official residences, not private properties like Balmoral Castle, the Royal Lodge, etc. The Sovereign Grant could be as much as $100 million per year. Next is the Duchy of Lancaster, which includes a portfolio of land, property and assets held in trust on behalf of the King. Money is gotten through selling or leasing these properties, and all this money is considered the monarch's personal income. The Duchy of Cornwall is similar. However, this institution funds the monarch's heir, Prince William, and his family. Other members of the royal family are paid from excesses of these two institutions, and they each bring in an average of $20 million per year. Money brings about power and influence, and we've already established that the Windsor family has a ton of it. Historically, the British royal family conquered over a quarter of the world's population, creating colonies on different continents. Now, most of their colonies have gained independence. However, they still have a certain level of influence in these former colonies. Stories of the British Empire are discussed in the history of many countries, and there are monuments dedicated to members of this family in many countries as well. And the list goes on. Although they have influence across the world, the power of the British royal family is primarily concentrated in the UK and the Commonwealth realms. This power has evolved over the years through. Centuries ago, the monarchs had absolute power over their country. There was no legislature, they made the rules, and there was no questioning it. However, in the 1200s, the people started revolting, and it became clear that absolute monarchy was not sustainable. As a result, monarchs proposed written constitutions, which were changed frequently to cater to the needs of the public, as the times changed. Now the British monarchy is an example of a constitutional monarchy. That is, the monarch's power is not limitless or absolute, it exists within the boundaries of the constitution. Simply put, it means that although he's the king, Charles III cannot do anything he likes, and when it comes to political power, he doesn't have much of a say in that either. The British Parliament holds most of the political power, so if the Windsor family has little political power, what do they have then? The answer is social power. This family is more or less the nation's identity on a local and international scale. They're more popular with the public, they paint a prettier picture of leadership sometimes, they promote national unity, they are an embodiment of the nation's history, pride, culture, etc. Also, they contribute significantly to the country's economy by just being there. However, even though most of their power and relevance comes from being on display, they are entitled to some special privileges, and there are some duties that only a member of the family can carry out. Apart from having access to some of Britain's most precious historical treasures, special members of the Windsor family have certain powers and privileges. The king, for example, and head of the family is the most powerful Windsor, and this power comes with the ability to pull a few strings. For example, with proper advice from government ministers, King Charles could appoint lords to sit in Parliament. He also has the power to pardon criminals, proclaim war, command the armed forces, dissolve Parliament, and bestow ceremonial titles such as knighthood to members of the public that deserve such titles. Another privilege the king gets to enjoy is that he's not required to own passports or a driver's license. Even though he has driven several vehicles and traveled to multiple countries, he can make these trips with or without these documents. First of all, these documents are issued in his name, and there's the general understanding that he's the monarch of one of the biggest royal families in the world, so chances that he'll get pulled over or searched by authorities are zero to none. Besides the king, other past and present royal hotshots include the beloved Princess Diana, the Prince and Princess of Wales, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, and the King's grandchildren, particularly Princes George and Louis and Princess Charlotte. The level of influence these children have on the British public is insane, and they have a collective net worth of at least $8 billion. Anything these three people touch or wear immediately has a skyrocketed market value, and as they grow older, this level of influence could increase exponentially. Despite coming from a family of wealthy royals, 
the Windsor family has been able to build on their wealth and influence with every passing generation. While questions about the sustainability and continuation of the family have been raised, the Windsors seem to be at the peak of their social power, and seeing as the younger members of the family are well loved by the public, they may be around for a while longer. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Till next time.